Hey everybody, well we're up to the next stage of this conversion of a garage, an old garage, into a usable room. Okay, I've taken you through the processes of rendering, uh, wall framing, taking the roof off, putting insulation in, plastering, all, all the stages of plastering, now we're up to the painting. So, it's painting, okay, I've been painting for years and years and years. Uh, there's all sorts of gimmicks and different ways that people will tell you to do painting but I find that the old and tried are the true methods and my methods we're talking about raw walls raw plaster work so we're not talking about existing work we're talking about new work so what I find for the best is three coats of paint an undercoat and two top coats you always need a good quality undercoat, you always need good quality top coats. Don't be fooled by the fact that cheap paints will do some fine, kind of incredible job, one coat wonders, whatever. It generally is not worth trying, it doesn't work. You're better off just spending the money and also that includes spending money on good equipment, brushes and rollers. I don't believe I don't believe in all the little gimmicky kind of things that you'll get into corners with either. It's just a slow and steady hand that will get you there. And with practice, you'll get quicker. So I'm going to show you how to do new work. Also, in another video, we'll do how to paint the window. Painted hundreds of windows in my life. And I've come up with a slightly different method than what might be uh, generally accepted. But... It's a very fast method and it seems to do, for me anyway, does a great job. That's talking about windows. Let's keep with the walls. Uh, I will start off, we're going, I'm going to be painting even the floors. Whoa. Ceiling, walls, floors. We work our way from the top to the bottom. And I've got to cut it all in, all the corners will be cut in. And then I will roll it with a 270mm roller. That might be a little bit biff, you're not experienced with a roller, you might want to go for a smaller roller to start with. Uh, and the roller on a handle, I will be standing and walking with the handle. I will use a scaffold for the cutting in, then I get rid of the scaffold for the roller. Make the room nice and large and empty. Before you can start painting, you've got to make sure your paint is all mixed up. It's been sitting on the shelf for who knows how long. It needs a really good stir, but even better than a stir, and if, if you can only stir it, you've got to do it way more than that. You've got to get right to the bottom and stir it all together. But if possible, the very best thing is to get all the paint out of that tin and into another one. And you just pour the whole lot out. So you can get to the bottom of that can because even with stirring, there could still be residue left on the bottom. In this case, it's all pretty good. Uh, also, you try and do an undercoat with either the same colour as the top coat or as close as possible. In this case, everything's going to be white. So it's a real easy job for me this time because I just need white paint. Most undercoats start off white. If you need a colour, you need to specify that with your retailer. Make sure that then they mix it up. It can get a bit complicated with all the different bases out there. So make sure you get everything from the bottom of that can and out. Then stir it up. In this one. And then pour it back into the original can. And use this, I'll use this container, this paint pot, as the one that I work from. And what I sometimes do, especially if I'm working with colours, is mix it backwards and forwards several times. Just mixing it one to the other, one to the other, and that does the whole stirring process in one go. Alright, let's get into it. First up, the cutting in. 
all ready to go. Now it's a matter of cutting in all those corners everywhere that the roller won't have access to. There you go guys, the cutting in is all done. Before we go on, a couple of things to note. When you're using undercoat, talking about quantity of paint that you're going to use. When you use undercoat, you'll roughly use, on new work, you'll use twice as much undercoat as you will the top coat. So, if you're thinking you're going to be using three coats of paint and two top coats, you'll basically use the same amount in one undercoat as you will in those two top coats. So keep that in mind when you're working out your quantities of paint that you need. Um, the other thing is, you'll notice that I've got no ar uh, skirtings, no architraves. And uh, what I do, because it's new work and I'm doing it, I have the option of leaving those off to make the painting easier. And I will put them on either just before the final coat or even after the final coat. And I'll show you how I do that when the time comes. But makes painting a lot easier if you've got no cutting to no, no cutting in to do around that doorway. You can just leave it bare and paint right up to the door jam. Uh, another thing is to always maintain a wet edge. When you're painting uh, a section like this, first thing, you don't stop halfway and go and have a cup of coffee or whatever. You do the whole thing in one go. Uh, the other thing is, as you're working along, you always maintain a wet edge. So you're always brushing back on your work. You're not just always going forward. You actually go back over your work. One, to get rid of the brush marks, but more importantly, to make sure that the whole thing stays wet. And then it, you leave it and let it go dry. The other thing is, is on these edges here, on the bottom, you always brush it off. So you put your paint on and then you brush that edge off because otherwise you'll end up with lumps of paint, a thick line of paint on that edge. So, which is what you do not want. To, so there you go, always brush off that edge when you're finished and um, if you're not used to painting, you do it in one big go. So top the bottom, finish it off. You can even do that with the whole lot as well, just to get any uh, thicknesses of paint that will end up running, because you know what runs, and uh, it just keeps a even consistency with the paint. So there you go guys, now it's time to move on to the roller. Uh, I'm using a new roller, when you use a new roller, it's always a good idea just to dip it in some water and then basically try and get rid of all that water because you don't want to start off with a completely dry roller and um, very important it just just lets the paint not clog up the base of the roller. I've got 12 mil nap for this so roughly the the fibers the hair on that is 12 mil long. Uh, I prefer to use a lambs wool roller if I can get my hands on one. I think this is a bit of a cheap and nasty one that I've been using so far but if you can get a lambs wool uh, 10 12 mil nap roller that will work perfectly for windows uh, for walls and ceilings. As you can see I always start from the top and work my way down uh, that way you can deal with any drips and uh, the like. As you see there, from what I've already done on the ceiling, because we don't want to end up with any marks like that on the finished product. Uh, being a new roller, you just got to watch for little bits of fluff or whatever that might come out, and probably will need a, just a very light sand after this undercoat is dry. Once again, you've got to keep a, a wet edge uh, as uh, from the beginning to the end. Keep the roller always facing in one direction. Don't change it around because you'll notice that you have different pressure points on the roller 
as you work with it. It takes a bit of getting used to, especially if you use a wider roller. You can get even wider ones than this, and they're even more difficult to use. So maybe start off with a smaller roller, maybe a 186 inch or an 8 inch, rather than jumping straight into something like this 9 inch 270mm. You'll notice that I put the paint on ahead of where I was working and then I worked back to the spot of uh, where the previous roller load was on. And then, so, so what I'm doing is I'm putting it on the head and then drawing off the left hand edge as I work backwards. And then when it reach, reaches about the same consistency, I start going ahead and working my way forward. Then the next one will once again be put on ahead of where I last left off, work back to what I've previously done, and then work forward. Day two, and we are ready to paint the top coats. Check out the room though, all undercoated. White everywhere, wow. Talk about being in a white room. Do, 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 do. Yes, Eric Clapton will be Eric Clapton? I think so, yeah. <laughs> would be very happy with my white room. Ah, some of you will get that. Okay, little tip for overnight. When you're using the same brush, same roller, the next day, a lot of people, at the end of the day, wash everything out. Well, years and years of trying to keep things clean, I've learned that you don't have to do that. Save a lot of time and energy If you simply, two things, either drop it in water overnight, both the brush and the roller, just drop them in water and then spin them out the next day to get rid of the water, or even easier, put them in a plastic bag. And uh, you unwrap that. And you are ready to go need to have a fresh plastic bag every day because the paint will dry on the inside of the bag and it will make things make life really bad because you'll end up with all this flaky paint everywhere so a fresh plastic bag every night and you can just start the next day rolling if you're changing colors obviously wash it all out but if you're not changing colors then take it easy just put them in a plastic bag I'm just going to do a couple of takes of the different stages. So that's everything cut in. You can still see how it appears as though you can see through the undercoat, but that is actually sealed. So we're going to put, now I'm going to roll on the first of the top coats. And after that, we'll have a bit of a look when it's dry, have a bit of a look so that we can see the difference between the three stages undercoat, first coat. And the, and the last coat. Alright guys, let's get into the two top coats. Yeah, well, what do you think of that? That's the end of the first coat. And now we are heading for the second coat. Cut in, do the roller. Maybe a light sand here and there before I do it, it's not too bad. I thought they might have, I might have picked up a bit of grit off the floor when I was cutting in the bottom of the rendered sections, but it doesn't look like it, so it feels pretty good. Might just give this wall, maybe the ceiling, a very light sand before we go on. There's a couple of little spots here and there. If your paint's nice and clean, probably don't need to sand it between these last two coats, but it's always worth checking just in case. All right, do a bit of sanding and I'll do the cutting in and the rolling and we'll check back soon. Well, we're all done. One undercoat, two top coats and check out the finish. Cannot see through that at all. A perfectly finished wall there, no sign of the plaster creeping through on the wall there. And um, corners looking really nice and square. I 
really liked the way it's finished off. So you notice I haven't done the architraves and skirting. That's what we're just going to do now. So the painting is finished. How am I going to finish off the timber work against that finished painting? Let's find out. Hey, well, there's the architrave all fitted. Just a couple more things to do. A bit of gap filler in the back of it, and then uh, a bit of paint on the wall to cover up the gap filler. When I do the gap filler, you just rub off the bit that's on the architrave. What have I done to the back of the architrave? I've already painted it. That's had, well this timber comes all pretty primed, so I've undercoated it and I've put a top coat on the architrave. Completely over the whole thing actually. Even though I've got to go over the face of it again, I don't have to go over the back because when I put that gap filler on, I just wipe off the gap filler off the timber and have just paint uh, carefully down on the wall side of it. So I've saved a couple of cutting in uh, attempts with the last coat on the wall and two, at least two coats on the woodwork with an undercoat and the top coat. So all I have to do is just clean up the, the surface of here. I don't have to touch the back of the architrave again. It's done, it's finished. Normally you have three different trades in I've got a plaster, a painter and a carpenter. Because I've done the whole lot myself, it has enabled me to get away with something a bit tricky and saved a bit of time. You're not going to be able to do that on every job. In my case, because I did the whole lot, it just makes life a bit quicker, a bit easier for myself. You may be able to do that in your situation as well. Anyway guys, that's the painting job. Everything's done. I've even painted the window. Check out uh, my sneaky little method on uh, window painting. And uh, that's it for now. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.